Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Dion Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about Survive This Fantasy RPG. I'm going to do this uh, in two-part series. Uh, one will deal with the core rule book, and then the other will deal with the Game Master's Guide. Um, what I typically do when, I, when I'm reviewing or previewing a, uh, an RPG product is I wait until I have both the, uh, both the PDF and the soft cover. And I tend to wait until I actually have the soft cover before I dig into the game. Uh, so this is a game that I've been you know, waiting for for quite some time. And, um, you know, although not a huge amount of time, I don't make it sound like the, the Kickstarter didn't, uh, you know, it was less than six months turnaround, I believe, uh, between backing the Kickstarter and actually getting the uh, soft cover books. Also, I want to point out that um, I had backed it at a, uh, at a level which gave me additional copies for vouchers. Uh, so five vouchers for each of the PDF and the soft covers, so for both books, so a total of 20 vouchers, uh, good enough for five complete sets of both. And what I was intending on doing was I was giving out, uh, you know, the free PDFs and and hopefully that the, the free uh, vouchers for the soft covers once my channel hit 800, 900, and 1,000 subscribers. So we just hit 900 subscribers uh, yesterday, although it does fluctuate, you know, one subscriber, you know, here or there, you know, back and forth between the two. But I wanted to give out some free, uh, some free PDFs uh, for the, uh, for the game. So I, I want to talk a little bit about both books first off. So here they are. And uh, these are pretty... You know, these are pretty heavy duty. I mean, they are solid, uh, solid books. Nearly 200 pages for both, uh, 192 for the the core rule book. And I believe this one here is a little over 200 pages for the, for the Game Master's Guide. So very heavy duty uh, pages and, you know, covers. Both of them have the player character sheet on the back, which is something that I really like because it makes it easier to make a copy of it. One downside to my experience with the soft covers, and this has nothing to do with bloat games, um, you know, and, and, and nothing to do with uh, Lulu Press, which is where I bought them from. FedEx delivered me my first set of copies in an empty carton. I mean, it was just, it was empty, and they actually bothered to put it in my uh, in my mailbox. So I was like, well, and and they recorded it as being delivered, which I was kind of screwed at that point because I was like, well, then I have no way of proving that uh, you know the books were never delivered. Um, so I fortunately I had the the additional vouchers, uh, although that is less than I can give out. Um, you know, as a as a reward to my subscribers. So, uh, so that's the one unfortunate thing. Last month, when I hit 800 subscribers, um, what I did was I I was looking to give away three, and actually only one person responded to collect uh, his one copy of the PDF for just one of the books. What I'm going to do this time around is. Uh, I'm going to ask that person if he wants the second copy of the PDF so that he can get the uh, the Game Master's uh, uh, guide. Um, one person, one lucky winner this time around is going to get the, uh, we'll get both. So you'll get the complete set of PDF. And then once my channel hits a thousand, I will take a look at my stock of what I have left over as far as the vouchers are concerned. And reward those out to uh, people that respond. So the way that you win is uh, you're going to subscribe, leave a comment on this video, and then I will use that comment in order to use the, the randomizer so I can randomly pick from the people that uh, 
that responded in this video. And uh, you know, while you're at it, you know, please like and share to get the uh, word out about this game. So without further ado, I'm going to start taking a look at the, the core rulebook. And we'll go right to the PDF for that. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we have Survive This Fantasy. Core rulebook from uh, Bloat Games. And if, if you look at my channel, you'll see that I have covered a number of games produced by Bloat Games. Uh, whether they're written by Eric Bloat, uh, a couple by Josh Palmer as well. And he has a, a fairly consistent staff of writers and editors and, uh, and artists and such. So uh, if you go back, you will see that there's a, you know, this is a really tight knit group of uh, individuals that he has working um, on these games. So you know, by far one of my favorite OSR developers out there uh, these past nearly two years. He draws his inspiration from Dungeons and Dragons, Palladium Fantasy, the, Hero, uh, the Hero's Journey, Index Card RPG, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Low Fantasy Gaming, The Black Hack, Sharp Swords and Sinister Spells, and Blades in the Dark. Now this is the, this is basically the core rules or the players, you know, rule book here. And so it's going to go through character creation, uh, talk about uh, professions, classes, so all of your very typical things that you would see. Now, one unique thing about this, or possibly not unique, but just... Uh, something I haven't seen very much in OSRs is that uh, there's a lot of races and a lot of classes, all right? And so that's something that, um, you know, that, that shows how much uh, Eric Bloat and others have put into this, uh, this game. I believe this is um, probably the, the thickest two book volume uh volumes that he has for just one game i mean it comes very close to um vigilante city which you know is now four books but th that includes two supplements so um so this is a big big project for them and and it's it's phenomenal uh so far from what i've gone through money and equipment uh playing the game and then the appendix. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to skip over introduction to telling you how, you know, what the basics of a role-playing game are, because most of my uh, subscribers and, and even visitors, if you're coming to my channel, you're, you're probably very familiar with uh, RPGs to begin with. So I'm not going to get into the basics of uh, the basics of what an RPG game is. Now in the PDF, they have the, uh, they have the player sheet uh, early on in the book. Attributes. So the hallmark of all OSR games is that they have the, the six basic attributes that you've seen in old D&D. Here they add uh, one additional one, a seventh attribute, which is survival. So you have your strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, charisma, and survival. Survival is kind of like a uh, is kind of like a, a mulligan pool. So if you do a bad roll and let's say you have three three points of survival, uh, you could re-roll up to three times. Um, not for that one in you know individual event, but you can roll up to three times during the course of your uh, during the course of your gameplay, and um, you take the lower of the uh, you take the lowest of the two score or the I'm sorry you take the best of the two scores. Uh, so uh, so they're not rolled at advantage, but they are rolled uh, just a second chance at certain things. So. Um, Attribute, uh, attribute, uh, attribute checks. 
Attributes run normally from 3 to 18. You're going to use a system of uh, rolling 46 and dropping the lowest number, which is a very, very common um, D and D mechanic. Uh, that's method three, I believe, in uh, in first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. <coughs> Excuse me. So, and then attributes they have a modifier attached to them based on, you know, if you're an 18 or a 19, that's optimum. And that's a plus three, and a three is pitiful, and that's a minus three. They describe each of the attributes. Survival, as I said, is a basically a reroll. The ability, an in-game ability to reroll a failed attempt on a, a dice roll at the cost of one survival point per roll. You can only roll once per instance and you take the higher of the two rolls. Hit points, hit points a little bit different here. So HP is the character's life. To determine the character's starting hit points, you simply roll 2d6 and add the constitution my, um, bonus. If the character reaches zero hit points, they are considered out of action and are unconscious until healed and we'll go to the, uh, the randomized roll that you'll see when you do go to zero hit points or lower. Each time a character increases a level, you add a d6 plus the constitution bonus to the character's total HP. There is resting in this game. If you rest for four hours, you will recover 50% of your health points. Uh, if you rest for a full eight hours, you will recover all of your health points. Mending wounds is a, uh, at the GM's discretion, after combat, a character can attempt to mend wounds on another character, restoring between 1d4 hit points. This requires five minutes of uninterrupted concentration to perform and can only be done once per day. A character cannot perform this on him or herself. Saving throws. So the categories for saving throws that you get, there are six. It's courage, critical, death, magic, mental, and poison. And they talk about each of your, um, your save types. So what it means to make a saving throw and either succeeding or failing for courage. For critical, critical saves are rolled when a character takes 50% or more damage from their maximum hit point in a single attack. If the critical injury save is successful, then the character suffers only the hit point loss with no other negative effects. However, if the character unsuccessful then the character loses all bonuses and is at minus four on all die rolls for 12 hours or until healed to maximum hit points. So death, when your character is brought to uh, zero hit points, they're out of action. Um, and then you roll a, a 3d6, uh, I'm sorry, a d6. You roll a d6 on this chart. You are KO'd for two to four min, uh, 2d4 minutes on a roll of a one, you are dead on a roll of a six, and then various other um, potentials. You, you are concussed, suffers disadvantage for the remainder of the game session, unless magically healed. You have cracked bones, in which case your strength, your dexterity, and your constitution are temporarily reduced by uh, minus two for 48 hours or until magically healed. You could be crippled. Your strength and dexterity is permanently reduced by one, no magic healing for that. You are disfigured. Your charisma is reduced by two permanently. Again, no magic healing for that. And then dead. You are dead. No magic healing for that either. There are magic saves, mental saves. So mental saves is basically like your, your, your sanity. 
if you fail your ins uh, sanity roll, then um, there there may be some additional effects due to that. And this is also based on psionic, uh, psionic attacks as well. Poison. So the effects of poison. Alignment, a little bit different. Uh, so you have righteous, you have law, you have neutral, you have anarchist, and you have evil. All right, so um, not your typical nine different categories of alignment. Uh, if you choose to, you know, bother with that. So the fantasy races. So here we have each of the races and you have, uh, these are anthropom anthropomorphic wolves. And you can see they have an alignment generally. Um, there are any but rarely evil. They have their base movement. They have their bonuses based on their race. All right, and these are bonuses to both attributes and in some cases uh, based on their, their skills or abilities. Their languages, their starting lifespan and maximum lifespan, their starting size and their maximum size. Uh, you, can, you can basically uh, just determine these. You know, so you could say your character is between seven and eight feet tall with a maximum of eight and a half feet uh, if you wish. I'm sure that there's probably a minimum if you wanted to uh, include that as well, just for role playing purposes. So maybe, you know, take a, a half an inch uh, or half a foot, actually half a foot off. So six foot six might be the smallest that you could possibly be. And that's what they look like. Very, very impressive art. Always love the art and, uh, and bloat games, uh, various titles. You have these snake people, and their their attributes. I'll roll back up here, their attributes and such, and that's what they look like. Doppelangers, which, as you probably guess, they are um, shape changers, and that is what they look like in their their base form. Dwarves, many of their bonuses and everything you're, you're going to, you know, notice. So they get the plus two to constitution. They have dark vision. They're better at attacking with axes. Um, their crafting skill is at a plus one and they have knowledge of gems and metal. All right. And uh, as you can see, a longer lifespan than than typically humans have. And their size, uh, their size is between four and four and a half feet tall. And that's an example of a dwarf. Elves, virtually the same kind of stats. You'd normally see the dark vision. Um, they have a plus two to listening and spot checks, uh, which is, which kind of makes sense, uh, you know, related to D and D, uh, abilities as well immunity to charm and magic sleep they have a plus two to dexterity a minus one to charisma which i, I find i find kind of uh interesting um so maybe they're snooty elves the fianna car i guess i'm pronouncing that right uh, this is a, a demonic type race or a cross between human and demonic. Basically a Tifling, I guess, uh, or similar. <coughs> Ghouls, so you could play undead. And they, they have some interesting um, additional issues with playing these characters here. Um, any but righteous, so they, they cannot be righteous uh as ghouls, but they have a, a hunger issue that they must, uh, they must eat, you know, at least once a day or less every 36 hours, they start to suffer. They start to suffer, um, either constitution loss, um, hit point loss, intelligence loss, wisdom, strength, dex, survival, 
charisma. They lose another D4, um, lose D4 movement, and then uh, lose one hit point and roll twice on your next hunger roll if made within the next 12 hours. And an 11 to 12 is minus one to initiative. So you're going to keep on checking. All of these effects are permanent on a D12. So that's that's a thing to remember. So um, if you roll on the chart five times, you gain stench of the dead. You emit a horrible odor that sickens others within 30 feet for D6 rounds. A constitution check negates that. If you roll on the chart 10 times, the stench area becomes 60 and the constitution check is made at disadvantage. All right, so uh, very interesting um, details of this character race. Goblins. These are, you know, initially when I was looking at this a hatchling, I thought, all right, they're going to have a dragon board. No, these are, these are more dragon than, you know, than human dragon combination, you know, and so they're called hatchlings and you're basically, you have the ability to fly, you have dark vision, you have claws and bite, you have arcane skills. You can get rune tattoos uh, if you're a, a spellcaster. <coughs> Maximum lifespan into the thousands of years. Maximum 10 feet tall. Averages between 7 and 8 feet tall. And here is your, your basic human character. Their bonuses, they get plus 1 to survival. And pretty much at their maximum lifespan is between 70 and 100. And there you have your human characters. Kobolds. And there you have your kobolds. Let's see how tall kobolds are. Yeah, between two and a half and three feet tall. Maximum three and a half feet tall. Dark vision, dexterity, minus to strength. Plus one AC because of their skin. They're good at crafting, especially traps. And they're fast runners. Minotons, which are kind of like tiny elves or <coughs> sprite-like characters. Norgaram is a, uh, a bear-like humanoid race. Vesemirs are kind of angelic-looking race. And they have bonuses to charisma and persuasion. Evil creatures are at a minus two to attack them. You give off a 30-foot aura of calm. All allies within 30 feet gain a plus one to all saving stats. Very interesting. Profession. So characters, uh, characters can either roll on a random uh, table for professions or... Uh, the GM might allow them to uh, select their previous profession. If a character gains a bonus skill and they learn from their profession and gain later, they may take a permanent plus one to that skill and take a new skill. So uh, if it doubles up, they can take a plus one bonus to, uh, to it instead of uh, having two separate. So Apocathary... I'm starting to get a little bit of sinuses, so a little bit hard to speak. Armorer, baker, boyer, cartographer, clergy, cook, farmer, fisherman, forester, and so on. There's a, a long list of uh, probably very close to 20 or so 
uh, different background skills or knowledge areas. <coughs> Classes, the uh, framework is, is fairly simple. So you have your, your class, they have their prime attributes and recommended attributes. They're having their saving throws based on class. They have their uh, skill training, so what they are skilled at. They have a class bonus, all right, that gets added into sometimes attributes, sometimes, uh, sometimes skills, and they have starting gear. And then each level that they go up, so level two, they will add. Then they hit level three, they add again, four, five, all the way up through ten. Um, so they just keep on adding to their, whether it be attributes or their uh, skill abilities. Usually attack and weapon damage and such. And there we have an archer. You have assassins, same setup. So every character class has prime attributes, saving throw uh, modifiers, skill training, class bonuses, starting gear, and then a level of progression. Beastmasters have a companion, and you can see some of their abilities. They can start healing their companion a number of day, a number of times per day. X is your char uh, charisma modifier plus one. So if you have a, a plus one charisma modifier, an additional plus one here, that means that you can heal your companion up to two times a day. Cinder Torch is a kind of like a fire monk. All right, so pretty cool looking stuff. A fortune hunter, think of like Indiana Jones or a Lara Croft kind of uh, character. Master of Arms is basically your basic fighter. A mender is a healer. <coughs> and you can see they uh, they do have magic. They have uh, you know very tough and they can they can heal a number of times per day, uh, two times per day. All allies within 30 feet gain D6 plus wisdom modified hit points. So they can do mass healing, which will be very, very useful. <coughs> they have their Mender Spells list here. Uh, this is the number of spells that they get per level. So at first level, they get two spells. At second level, they add one more spell. At third level, they add one more first level spell and one second level spell, and so on. Uh, then they stop adding first level spells uh, from levels five through ten. So the most first level spells I could have is two, three, four, five. So basically, five first level spells. maximum rune tattoos per level and rune tattoos are an interesting thing um it's it's kind of complicated uh, in in just describing it for a video like this um i will try to explain it kind of briefly because there's a there's a negative effect or a negative consequence, I should say, if you fail learning uh, or applying a new uh, rune tattoo. And uh, it becomes, it's almost like some systems use sorcery where you have to give something up in order for um, 
in order for you to learn a spell or to use a spell. And, um, you know, I could probably spend a whole separate video just talking about magic in this game, which is which is something I'm, I'm inclined to do. So I, I probably will do that at a later date. Mercenaries, we're going to actually move forward out of the classes because there are very many classes. And let's see what happens when we get to the next section. A ranger, a street rat. It's kind of like a thief. Warrior of the Empty Hand. This is like your traditional monk character. A zealot. Has spells, yeah. Yeah, kind of like a, a righteous or a law level of progression uh, for zealots anarchist level progression so each different types have a, you know evil level progression so you could have a zealot of basically three different types of uh, zealots we go to skills and so here is your list of skills and the attributes that uh, go along with them a description of those skills and they're pretty straightforward languages you can learn how to read speak and write in languages each time that you take this you cannot use more than one skill point on each language Leveling up, um, so Session Survival is the first way to earn experience points. One point is, is given uh, simply for completing or surviving an entire game session. Even if your character does not get very much accomplished during the game session, the XP is still earned. Then you have Encounter XP where they can earn up to three points per game session um, for encounter XP. So if you had five combats, they would still only get three. If they had, uh, if they had three, they would gain three. All right, so, uh, so now you're up to a maximum of four so far. Then there's exceptionally role-playing, and that could grant another skill point. All right, so now you're at uh, potentially five skill points then you have discretionary where the GM can award another two so now we're up to seven and then finally um, the hero XP is uh, XP given when a player who performs a selfless act of valor this act must be something that is above and beyond the goal of the session unlike other types XP can be earned hero uh, XP can only be earned by one player per gaming session. And if nothing hero-like is done, then no player earns the XP um, by the thing. So on average, your character is going to earn, you know, most likely four or so experience points. That's the one survival it's going to be at least one encounter. Um, there's one, one exceptional role playing, one discretionary, you know, so I, I would say about four on average. Uh, could be a little bit less, most likely, and not more than, uh, not more than, you know, probably seven, it looks like. One, three. That's four, five, six, seven, pop, at the most eight. Um, now those, this is an optional for groups that are very heavy into role playing. You could use this chart here for determining their levels, but 
the base chart is here. So once your character has earned five experience points, which could happen after the very first game session, uh, they will make second level. They will make third level at 14 experience points. So, and these are compounding. So it's not like, uh, you know, you have to earn, I believe these are compounding where 162 experience points you would be 10 uh, over all 162. I guess that's possible. You could you could either speed up or or slow this down um, as as you wish. So you could say that they are they are um, not building off the last. So to go from first level to second level, you need five. To go from second to third, you need a new fourteen. All right, and so on. So you make it a little bit more difficult each level to go to the next level. Yeah, I'm not seeing initially that described on how it goes. Money and equipment, I'm going to skip over this because it's all fairly generic. Acquiring rune tattoos. This really is something that I'm probably going to save a... Uh, a whole session on um, because it is a little bit complex and I want to make sure that I effectively explain it and there's a ton of spells there's psychic abilities as well Playing the game, so basically, you know, what are house rules, what are the game terms like action, free action, held action, advantage and disadvantage. <coughs> when you're rolling at advantage, you're going to roll 2d20 and, uh, and you will take the higher of the two rolls. When you're rolling at disadvantage, you're going to roll 2d20 and you're going to take the lower of the two rolls. And then remember, with survival points, you can always re-roll a um, you know any any ineffective roll that you had or failed roll that you had. They go into the different types of combat, so you have various options that you can do for the combat sequence. Traditional is is there surprise. Roll initiative, highest initiative goes first, you take care of your actions without rolling a new initiative, you repeat steps three through, so you don't keep on re-rolling initiative every round, but you go through. Um, there's another option where no matter what, ranged goes first. And I've seen ranged magic, you know, ranged magic, melee, Movement is oftentimes thrown in there as well. There's group initiative where not each individual player is rolling. The effects of cover. We have a critical. So critical hit is a natural roll of a 20 and there's a critical hits chart that you refer to. There's also a fumble chart when you roll a natural one. There's a fumble chart as well. Difficulty checks, so are determined by rolling a, a d20. A 10 is considered easy. A medium is 15. Difficult is 20. And near impossible is 25. Obviously, you're going to be adding pluses or minuses to your roll uh, based on your character class, your skills, your race in some cases, and so on. So, uh, so these are not straight up rolls. And remember, you can always refer back to survival points in case you uh, failed a really important role. 
grabbing modifiers. Various movement effects, or the effects on movement, I should say. Outsmart. When successfully attacked on, uh, attacked or affected by an ability or spell of a hostile character or creature, the character may attempt to outsmart their foe before damage is rolled. Roll a d20 and add your intelligence and wisdom bonuses and the outsmart bonus to the roll. The outsmart roll is equal to or greater than the attack roll than the roll on the chart below. If the effect is of um, had no initial roll and the attacker rolls and adds the appropriate modifiers to their roll and compare is successful, the player with outsmart then switches places in the initiative with the attacker uh, if they so choose. Outsmart does not require an action. A character with Outsmart can use it equal to his or her wisdom modifiers per day. All right, and then you could roll. Uh, the attack fails, but the attacker takes the hit at one half damage. Round it up. Interesting. Uh, so that was a six. The attack still hits but does one half damage and is half effective. Cannot put you at less than one hit point. All right, so that's a very good modifier as well. So basically, if you made your roll, um, you're going to have some kind of an effect that is beneficial. That's an interesting mechanic. I've never seen that before. Dice usage. Here's the critical table and basically 20 different uh, on a roll of d20. So you have a number of different effects here. Um, not quite 20 different effects but and the worst is always the death blow. It deals triple damage and the target dies unless they make a death save. And they, they have a separation here between melee and ranged co uh, combat. So they may have some differences between the two. But always a 20 is always a the potential for a one shot death. Critical fumble table. On a 20, you have face planted in front of your target. They immediately get a free uh, melee attack on you. And with a missile weapon, you broke your weapon. Your weapon breaks, striking you for D4 damage. Madness is if you Obviously, you go insane, and there are effects of madness. There are ways to remove madness. And this is the madness chart. Courage saves, and the effects of failed courage, extreme failed courage. Here's your fear table, obsession table, style of play. So various style of play, whether you're a single character versus a troop. Funnel character generation, in case you uh, want to create a um, very quick group of player characters to run through. And what a funnel is, is it's a weeding out process. Whoever survives it becomes your first level character. And um, players usually roll, you know, um, roughly four of them. They're all zero level characters. And then they run through um, some kind of an initial uh, quest. This comes straight from Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, and it's really a fun, fun system to use. 
um, as part of like your session zero uh, kind of uh, kind of thing to get to know your players and to, and to see you know how they uh, how they play and and they get to know the characters that uh, you know they get to choose which one you know uh, of their survivors that survived this uh, tunnel uh, funnel they get to use uh, which one they chose to make first level. Then there's a monster section. And these are starting monsters. So this is not this is not the full list of uh, that you'll get in the, the Dungeon Master's uh, guide. So this is just to, you know, for use with the funnel, um, for example. So very simple monsters for the player characters to tangle with. So basically, there you have it. Um, this is uh, Survive This Fantasy RPG, Part 1, The Core Rules. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Remember, if you comment and your name gets selected out of all of the commentators, then you will, uh, you will win a free PDF of, uh, of both the Core Rules and of the Game Master's Guide. So uh, I'm going to post this uh, video up today, let it run for a couple of days before I make the, uh, before I make the pick on uh, who wins the PDF. Then I will run the Game Master's Guide and then probably tie the, uh, the Game Master's Guide PDF to that as well. Um, you know, so maybe I won't give out both in one shot. I'll give out one for this time and one for that time. I'll see. I'll see how it works out and uh, how much response I get on both uh, videos. So once again, thanks for joining. Uh, if I don't see you on the gaming screen sometime soon, um, you know, enjoy yourself out there. Uh, put put out those games on online since many of us are, you know, still kind of quarantined or. You know, there, there aren't as many gaming stores or conventions opened up uh, yet uh, other than virtual. Uh, so if you're running a game that you'd like for me to take a look at, you know, please feel free to leave that in the comments section as well. And uh, when, when I run games, I, I post up, you know, invitations uh, for you to join those on DriveThru RPG. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not DriveThru RPG, on Roll20. So, uh, you know, feel free to jump in on any of those when I when I do advertise those I usually advertise those on on Facebook or um, you know or on Twitter I'm going to start doing those on Twitter as well so once again thanks for joining have a great afternoon take care